Hi, my name is Anthony. I go by the username of Midnight Raven on the NSX Prime forums. Um, and also, that's the name of my YouTube channel. Um, normally, on my channel, I basically post track day videos or autocross run videos. Um, but I kind of wanted to do something different. Uh, mainly to share something that's normally not on YouTube, which is do it yourself installations or modifications of NSX's. Um, I've noticed usually owners don't tend to share that type of content on YouTube at least. Um, there's definitely tons of that in NSX Prime. Um, but on YouTube it seems like usually you just kind of see the end result or the car on the dyno and that's about it. Um, so I thought it would be a good learning experience for me and also a good learning experience for other owners or future prospective owners that might be interested in the platform um, and seeing how it is to actually modify an NSX um, with something that wasn't really intended to be on the car from the factory. Um, so with that said, this is going to be like a mini YouTube series with a do-it-yourself style format doing this modification, which is a science to speed twin turbo system. <clears throat> um, I guess to start on I'm going to give some information on the car, its history, and then we'll go on to the modification portion after that. Um, so this is a 91 Acura NSX. I bought it from dealership back in 2011. Um, it was a little bit in rough shape, um, but it was basically what I needed to be able to modify a car and not feel guilty on destroying like a pristine museum example piece. Um, the car was originally Sebring, Sebring Silver with a Berliner black top and a black interior. It was it was a five speed as well. Um, the car had some issues, the transmission had some issues uh, when I got it. It wouldn't shift into third gear above like 2,500 RPMs. So again, I was able to kind of get it cheaper than usual, but that was kind of good beneficial for me because it was a car that I knew I could modify. And I feel horrible about it. Um, so <clears throat> basically, I start off doing the general light upgrades, which is just weight savings, taking the spare wheel out, taking the engine cover off, uh, putting an intake on it, um, and then I did the Comptech headers and Comptech exhaust. Um, the original Comptech headers and exhaust, actually, I think like the first version of it where DC Sport made the headers, I think, um, for Comtech. Um, then I changed the exhaust to a GRF uh, titanium exhaust, which sounds amazing compared to the other setups. So I love that. Um, <clears throat> and then after that, I started focusing on other parts of the car. So I did the big brake kit on the NSX. They're uh, stock tech ST40s. Um, and I also did suspension, which was these custom coilovers from Bilstein. Um, they actually kind of have a cool story to them. Uh, the Bilstein um, coilovers I have on here, they're actually motorsport coilovers that were developed by Honda Racing Europe, um, of Europe, for an NSX-R that raced in the 2005 uh, 24 hour of Nurburgring. Um, and the car itself that used these coilovers ended up getting, I think, 12th place overall and first in its class. So if someone like myself looking for something that is actually track proven, I felt like, I mean, you can't get any more track proven than something that raced in an endurance race in Europe on a Nurburgring, which is a pretty challenging track. Um, so I ended up purchasing, purchasing it from uh, Procar, who was offering the, the, the coilover system on NSX Prime. <clears throat> and got it installed, and as you can see from all the videos, like the car is very stable, planted, doesn't have much body roll. Um, so I thought it worked out well in the end for me, at least. Um, and then I did the interior after that, um, basically I tore up the whole interior part, 
redid all the, the door panels and dash in Alcantara, um, doing it in a NSX Type R slash Type S vibe. Um, basically, I did the Alcantara interior because the NSX R interior is like that, but instead of the red stitching, I did the uh, silver stitching. Um, and then I did the two tone color scheme of the Type S. Um, by using cheek gray door panels and cushions. Um, and I have the seats made by Downforce USA, which they're like basically NSXR replica seats. Um, I think they follow the same car and Kevlar layering setup for the seat. Um, so I ended up doing that. Um, and basically that completes the interior. Uh, I, and then <clears throat> Basically, after that, I ended up doing the body, um, focusing on the body. Uh, so I ended up uh, doing the Margaret Hills white body kit. I think the only thing I didn't do that was Margaret Hills is the hood and the spoiler. Uh, instead, I got a Downforce USA Type R style hood. Um, and then also a Voltex Type 5 dual element rear wing. Um, and then the other exterior modification I did was the mirrors. These are uh, from, a, I think they're a company called Magical Racing or something out of Japan. Um, they're really intended for motorcycles, but I was able to adapt it to mount to the door sash, I think they call it. Um, and I think it like it's a per pretty good match for what I did with the rest of the car. Um, and basically I took it to Joe in New York to basically respray it this magnum gray pearl color <clears throat> the magnum gray pearl color is really a uh, it's a special order color only available in europe and japan between the years i believe 1997 and 1999 um, so there aren't many examples of this of nsx's with this color um, and i've always seen it in like pictures and in videos like video games and i thought it was a cool subtle color that was unique, but still Honda, and like a Honda color, that would be a nice contrast to like the wilder water, uh, wide body kit of that I put on the car. Um, and then that gets us to this point in time where now I feel like there's really not much more I need to do to then be able to increase power. So. Now I'm going to basically put a science to speed twin turbo system in it to give me that extra, like, I think it's like 180 horse wheel horsepower. Um, and I think in combination with all the weight reduction and the aero work that is done on the car, it's going to basically, um, transform the car to like what my final goal was, um, which was basically like a more modern day capable performance NSX, um, but still have like that old school raw driving experience. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll talk to you what you get with the Science Speed Kit. Um, basically, <clears throat> you get five boxes. Um, I'll show what's in those boxes later, um, but besides those boxes, you get this folder that basically has uh, parts lists of what you're getting with your kit um, and also uh, the detailed instructions of how to install this kit. Uh, it generally tells you that you should be kind of a competent mechanical savvy person to be able to tackle this with um, I kind of feel like I, I can do it. Um, you know, I've never torn an engine apart but I pretty much done most of the work on this car myself, minus repainting it, um, just because I don't have a booth and all this stuff, but um, I think I would have the capabilities to do this, so I think at least I'm giving you the my experience level so you understand where I'm coming from and what to expect out of the video content. It's not like a pro working on the car, it's more of someone that generally knows kind of what to do, uh, but is learning along the way. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoy this. A few moments later. So like I had mentioned, 
in the first section of the video. Um, you get five uh, boxes with the Science and Speed kit. Um, I have some of the parts out, um, and I was just gonna kind of show what's in each box and also go over something that I kind of learned uh, since I wasn't really careful reading the website. Um, so the uh, I guess I'll start with that. So the Science and Speed uh, setup uh, turbo kit has a special type of flange or a different type of flange than what the factory catalytic converter comes with it's like this um, so basically <clears throat> you can't just hook it up to your standard catalytic converter you need an adapter pipe which is, is mentioned on their website but I missed that um, the other option that they they offer is they sell a high flow cap that comes with the adapter pipe welded in with the appropriate flange um, so I ended up deciding to go without, down that route just so that I didn't have to uh, uh, have extra pipes and hardware to keep track of, uh, just kind of minimize clutter in the, the, the setup. Um, so I kind of wanted to mention that when you do, if you do decide to purchase a kit, make sure you either buy the adapters if you have a 91 to 96 NSX. Uh, I think the 97 and above don't require the adapter. Um, but yeah, so yeah, then there's you, there's actually five boxes that you get uh, right now. Um, I think I threw away one of the boxes um, since I had taken everything out of the boxes just to inspect everything to see if everything was good and kind of uh, consolidated them into three of the boxes instead of having them on all five. Um, so you can see here is the uh, <coughs> basically the uh, the replacement beam that you can uh, that would end up replacing um, the uh, the front beam that's installed in, uh, that has a front engine mount that's also I believe too big for the turbo to fit in so they, they get a replacement beam um, and then in this box I have all of the like uh, in water cooling system um, so I think this is the front intercooler that then gets routed to the rear intercooler to cool that one. Um, so this has all like the, the hosing, the cables, the pumps, the bottle that would uh, be part of that system. And then here is the rear intercooler that basically I think has all the pipes for the intake side of the system. Um, so, um, there's that, it's all pre-built, they're all pretty much pre-bent, you know, nicely, uh, finished in some sort of powder coat finish. The ends look to be, uh, like swaged out so that the clamps hold better on them. Pretty nice setup. Um, and then... This box I have basically all of the well ECU related stuff and also hardware and clamps um, and cables. There's also some brackets, the wideband controller. Uh, I'm assuming this might be some sort of plating or bracketry and the ECU itself. Um, so yeah. It's not really super informative, but you can kind of see it's it's not a huge amount of stuff.